it's time to get the pulse of the fans when it comes to the Spurs getting Wimbanyana. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia. I am a Spurs digital beat writer for Ken's Five in San Antonio, and I'm glad to have you back. TGIF, everybody. Everybody is likely still just glowing about the Spurs winning the draft lottery and the inevitable arrival of Mr. Wimbayana. Hopefully. Because Brian Wright and Spurs, the Spurs president, Peter J. Holt, keep on messing with everybody, saying, well, you know, Wimby, we, he'll be a good player wherever he lands. Okay, okay, we get it. Jokes aside, we know the Spurs are going to draft him. But we know the numbers. We know the pros. We know, yes, there are cons. But we haven't heard from the fans yet. What are fans saying about Victor in Route 2 San Antonio? What are their thoughts about what he could be in his rookie season on the court? And then finally, are fans finally agreeing that tanking is the right path, not just for the Spurs, but for any professional team right here on Lockdown Spurs? Hey, I want to thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first person to listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts on YouTube, the Ken's 5 Plus app, Sirius XM radio app, and so many other uh, platforms. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Today's episode, yeah, again, Bird Dogs. You want to go to birddogs.com slash locked on NBA when you enter promo code locked on NBA. They'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Who is repping the fan base today? He is back, everybody. Longtime Spurs fan, pro tanker. He'll definitely talk about that later on the show. He is Zach Escamilla. Welcome back, Zach. Jeff, thank you so much for having me. And I'm so glad that Bird Dogs is the sponsor because I've been wanting to buy a pair of those. So I may actually uh, take them up on that offer, man. Use that promo code. Yeah, I got I got that uh, Tumblr. They sent me the Tumblr. It's really, really good. So hopefully uh, fans can sign up later when I talk about Bird Dogs. But hey, we're here to talk about the fan base, their reaction to Wimbayana. So let's dive into it, Zach. Uh, you know, is was this a moment where all Spurs fans are going to tell each other, where were you when the Spurs won the 2023 NBA draft lottery? Absolutely. And I mean, I'll, I'll start off by telling where I was. I was in my bedroom watching it, not in the living room, watching it on the bigger mm-hmm. television. I'm sitting in there because my wife's grandfather, who's 93, is a diehard New York Mets fan. So he's watching the Mets get their butt kicked. And I have to resort to watching on the smaller TV. And my daughter walks in there and, you know, my wife is curious. And, you know, my daughter is 18 months old. So when the Spurs got Wemby, I'm screaming. Uh, and, yeah. and my daughter thinks something's wrong. So she's, ah, and you know, I'm like, what's no, wrong with no, daddy? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. And even my wife said, I've never seen you this happy since when the Spurs won the championship in terms, you know, of the Spurs. Yeah. So, um it's been a while since she saw my excitement for a sporting event. So that's what I'm always going to remember, sitting in my master bedroom on the bed and then scaring my daughter. But hopefully one day when she's older, I'll be able to tell her, hey, look, this is why your mm-hmm. dad was excited. You know, we we look at the results, you know, obviously good times in San Antonio for the franchise, and it looks like the rebuild gets shortened quite a bit. And – you know, for the moment, was this kind of, you know, we'll get into tanking later, but was this kind of a moment where Spurs fans felt like, okay, thank goodness this team went through a bad season because now look. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, for me, this this validates, you know, the juice being worth the squeeze, Jeff. I mean, it was mm-hmm. a rough season. I mean, sure, there was, you know, some flashes with, you know, Jeremy Sohan really showing what he could bring to the table. Um, You know, we saw some flashes from these young guys, but Mm -hmm. I think I speak for all Spurs fans when we really don't want to (laughs) see that type of season on a regular Mm -hmm. basis. So for me, um, again, it's just exciting that 
you know, we were able to see some positives and now we got the big prize. You know, a man that I think I saw Sean Elliott, you know, Spurs legend, Memorial Day Miracle was quoted as saying, and, and maybe this is unfair to put this on Vic, but Sean Elliott believes that this guy could be the GOAT, the greatest player of all time. Yeah. And then you're seeing other people saying, oh, well, even if he ends up being the next, you know, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that's, that, that, that's a bust. And I'm thinking to myself, that's insane. Jeff, if you were to tell me 10 years in the, or, or 20 years in the future, you know, Doc Brown shows up and says, hey, mm-hmm. Victor Wembanyama is going to win championships with the Spurs. He's going to have a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar-like career. I'm going to say that's amazing. I mean, the man was the all-time leading scorer up until a few months ago. Um, so I, I just, it's its weird, some of the feedback that I'm seeing around the kid, right. because I know fans were excited, but at the end of the day, um, we do need to see the kid play. But there is a lot to be excited about. Yeah, there, there is. And for Spurs fans, obviously it's the culmination of not only just a bad season, but also kind of, you know, getting away from the end of the big three era, the Kawhi Leonard debacle, uh, you know, the Spurs trying to put something together from DeMar DeRozan to DeJounte to Derek and, and just not fitting. And then finally they just said, you know what, let's just start this thing over. Are, are, are Spurs fans, obviously they're still talking about it. It's all over. I mean, it's not just in San Antonio. It's all over the world. I, I mean, I'm, I have not seen the Spurs on TV this much in a quite a long time, you know, Victor and the Spurs and Victor, what did he bring to this? And, you know, he's going to Spurs. What a perfect spot are, are Spurs fans right now. You know, we'll get into expectations in a while, but are Spurs fans really buying into all the hype? Or do you think there are some Spurs fans that are still kind of like, you know what guys, let's just pump the brakes a bit. Let's just see how this kid pans out. Now, as you know, Jeff, I just recently came back to Twitter because I told you a while back we were texting. You said you need to come back to Twitter. And I said, I'll come back when the Spurs get Wemby. So, hey, I'm back, man of my word. So since I've been back for a few days, it's been nothing but positive vibes. You know, even people that I remember being, you know, anti-tank or pro-tank or getting along, which that's really nice to see for a change. Um so mm-hmm. thus far, everybody just seems really excited about seeing him play. I mean, the expectations are high. I mean, fans certainly are expecting Vic to, you know, at the very least, get us in the play-in conversation. At, at the very least. I, I think mm-hmm. that's the expectation that I'm seeing across the board, that they're going to at least be competing for a playoff slash play-in spot. So based on that, I think folks would be shocked and or disappointed if we're not at least in that mm-hmm. conversation. Um, but personally, I, I would definitely agree with folks. I, I do think this team, uh, even as of today with the current roster, um, if they are all 100% healthy, um, mm-hmm. has a chance really to make the playoffs. I, I, at minimum, the plan. I mean, Jeff, last year, there were a lot of games where the right. Spurs showed out, man, when they were playing with the full deck with Devin Bissell and Jeremy oh, Sohan sure. and Kelvin yeah. Johnson playing. They were they were competitive and they won some games. I mean, remember they did beat, you know, the number one seed Denver towards the end of the season. So, I mean, mm-hmm. again, there were flashes yeah. and, and I do think those expectations of making the playoffs are definitely reasonable. But anything other than that, mm-hmm. You know, maybe you should pump the brakes a little. Let's take baby steps. You know, those are great points you have there, uh, Zach. And I you know, I get why Spurs fans are excited. I understand. We all do. We all do. This is franchise altering. There's a reason for Spurs fans to be excited right now. But there's also should be some cause just to pause a little bit. Let's just see how he plays out. There's so many factors into this. You know, he is still a teenager. And that's a lot to ask for a teenager, although he looks like he's ready to handle it, but to shoulder an entire franchise and not to mention shoulder an entire country, France, that wanted the Spurs to win the lottery because of the French connections with, with Pat, with um, Patty, I'm sorry, excuse me, with Boris Diaw, Tony Parker, not to forget Jan Mahimi, Nando Dicolo. So 
there's a lot of reason why France is, is excited for this, why Spurs fans are excited for this, why you're excited for it. I mean, the list just goes on and on. We're talking with Zach Escamilla right here on Locked On Spurs. He is repping the fan base as the fans are getting their chance right here on Locked On Spurs to react to the Spurs winning the NBA draft lottery. Hey, when we get back, we're going to talk about what are fan expectations for Victor on the court. Are they expecting averaging a triple-double? Are they expecting finals MVP, NBA MVP? Oh, well, all that good stuff right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, I want to talk to you about bird dogs. You heard it a little while ago. Zach said uh, he's interested in trying bird dogs. Well, here's your chance to learn more about bird dogs. Look, if you want clothes that fit well, they're comfortable, and they're versatile, then look no further than bird dogs. Look better, feel great wearing bird dogs. They got stretchy fabric, so uh, they'll fit very, very well, make you look good, and they're comfier than any other shorts and pants. I can tell you from firsthand experience, I got myself shorts and pants from uh, bird dogs, and they fit perfectly and they also look great too i can wear them when at the gym or i can wear them out or i'm just wearing daily errands you definitely cannot go wrong by getting some bird dogs clothes right now uh bird dogs give you the freedom just to wear anywhere like i said if you want to go to the golf course with them you can wear them and you look great hey look part of the part of my take host famously wears pants from bird dogs and he says the only shorts that he truly loves are bird dogs you got You know, college football nerds, they say that it's the perfect pant for dads. They have a little extra gut. Bird dogs make them look great and feel comfortable. So you want to go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA and enter promo code LockedOnNBA, and they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Once again, go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNBA. Don't forget to use promo code LockedOnNBA. We're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Zach Escamilla. He is repping the Spurs fan base as they react to Wimbayana and the Spurs winning the NBA draft lottery. Once again, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every day. Uh, Next week on Locked On Spurs, we'll likely talk about Victor still. Uh, Shocker there. So stay tuned for that. He's not official yet, Zach. It's not official yet. He's not a spur yet. But it just just feels like it's a no-brainer pick. I I mean, the Spurs... Spurs fans are expecting no surprises come draft day, right? I think there would be rioting in the streets <laughs> if the pick was anybody else. Can you imagine? With the first pick, Scoot Henderson. Oh, my goodness. You know oh what? My goodness. That, that, that would just be – and listen, that's nothing against Scoot. I mean, I think yeah. Scoot's going to be a very good player, but um, – and, and, and I've actually had buddies of mine, you know, personal friends, you know, that when it happened, they were saying, dude, was kind of hoping you guys fell to two so you could take Scoot. I think he's going to be a better fit, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. I do know there are people out there, um, and it's a minority, that probably think Scoot should be the guy, but I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No disrespect to him. He's going to be a great yeah. player. Now, if the Spurs want to – you know, take some of that draft capital and maybe some players on their roster that, sure. you know, to, to, to trade up to that number two spot to get Scoot. I'm all for that. Yeah, But no, you, you can't pass up on Wemby. Well, speaking of Wemby, uh, you know, there's a lot of hype coming in. Spurs fans are buying into the hype. They're anxious to get their hands on anything Wemby merchandise from shirts, jerseys, like we know all that. But as far as on the court, Zach, what are fans expecting to see from him? Are they expecting to see him just a machine on both ends of the court? Are they expecting a 19-year-old kid to lead this team to a playoff spot, not necessarily a play-in spot? What are the fan expectations for him when it comes to numbers? Well, I think you mentioned playoff spot, play-in. I mean, that's, I think, right at the top. They're They're definitely mm-hmm. expecting – a big jump in the win column uh, and, and expecting to be in that playoff plan conversation. So I think I can safely say, you know, majority of fans will agree there. Now, in mm-hmm. terms of the actual on the court statistical production, uh, the statistics of everything, mm-hmm. I, I think fans would probably expect, you know, 17 points a game, 
10 or 11 rebounds. Again. Really? You know, essentially, you know, yeah. I, I, I think most fans would expect a double double. Personally, uh-huh. Jeff, I would be shocked if he averages anything under 17 a game. I really I, I'm would. right there with you. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm expecting like, like mid- 17 is the floor, and mm-hmm. maybe 25, 26 is the ceiling. And, and maybe See, that's I'll, too generous, yeah. mm-hmm. but that, I don't think that's so. kind of my re- reasonable expectation without trying to get too excited. And, and, and maybe some are saying, dang, Zach, that, that, that's quite a range. You know, that's quite a swing. But, you know, that I would say 17 to 26. <laughs> that that is really? that that I think is the floor and the ceiling. But hey, if he comes out and averages, you know, thirty plus, I'm I'm not right. gonna complain. No one's gonna complain. Um, but I think you know a double double. I think is a reasonable expectation. I mean, the guy is you know seven foot five. Um, so mm-hmm. and, and even on the defensive end, I think folks are definitely gonna expect him to. I'm not saying be in the defensive player of the year conversation, but to be active on the defensive mm-hmm. end. Um, to make people forget about, you know, your favorite player, Jakob Hurdle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so for me, uh, I, I think beyond that, rookie of the year is probably a reasonable expectation. If he doesn't win rookie of the year, I think people will be shocked. I, I, I'm expecting mid twenties, about 25, 26 a game. Uh, you know his skill set. I think it's just gonna throw defenses off. I mean, he just towers over everybody, and it's not like he's some sort of Frankenstein out there. You know, he's he's fluid with his moves. Uh, I think if anything, perhaps you won't see that spike until maybe after two, three months into the league. He's gonna have a big target on his back. There's no, you can't tell me Joker's gonna go at him or or, or Giannis is gonna go at him. Everybody's gonna go at him and test the kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, Defensively, I don't think there's going to be any issues there. I can see him averaging about two to three blocks a game. I can see him averaging double figure uh, rebounds, uh, you know, a, a game, uh, or at least for the season at the, end, at the end of the day. I do expect him to win rookie of the year, though. I do expect that. I think anything short of that would be a disaster. Now, obviously, there's injuries or, or load management, or now with the new CBA, players have to reach an X amount of games to get the awards. So a pop mm-hmm. below manages him like crazy. Well, then, yeah, he's not going to be able to do that. Get the award. So I think if anything, that could be his biggest thing is actually the Spurs just being super careful with him. So, but other than that, I'm expecting mid twenties, double figure rebounds, two to three blocks a game. I am very interested in his three point shot though, because he doesn't shoot the ball well from three, despite the highlights. Zach, your thoughts? I mean, he's clearly capable of shooting yeah, the he's three, right? I mean, but he's not accurate, though. Well, I mean, th- this is one of those instances where you kind of wish we kept the shot doctor on staff, right? Yeah. Um, but I definitely think, you know, even without Chip, going back to last year with Jeremy, you know, Jeremy Sohan, one thing about him, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, he wasn't afraid to shoot the three. You know, he had some dry spells, but the fact that he just kept shooting, I mean, you got to admire that. He was he was shooting through the slump. He wasn't, you know, allowing his confidence to get bogged down. And I think with, with Wembenyama, you know, I think the Spurs are going to give him the green light. So he's going to have the opportunity to work through any type of shooting slump. But I think, you know, Pop and the staff are really going to work with them to to help him, you know, hone in that three point shot. I mean, heck, we don't know what's going to happen with Doug McDermott. Maybe he stays on the team as that one of the veterans. You know, he's he's a prolific three point shooter. Maybe Doug can help him. I don't know. I, I'm just spitballing here, mm-hmm. but I definitely, you know, am happy that the guy is willing to shoot the three, mm-hmm. and that in you know effect will help you know his teammates get open by stretching the floor. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm waiting to see, but I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, is there any, you know, type of wild card point of his game that you or, or you know, maybe think that wow, he's better than advertised? Because for me, I know he he does turn the ball over uh, quite a bit of a clip. I'm I'm interested in seeing his assist to turnover ratio because I think they're definitely teams going to be double triple teaming him throughout the season once he gets going. So I love to see how he handles that type of pressure. That was something Tim Duncan adjusted to, David Robinson in, uh, adjusted to, was 
passing out of double teams, passing out of triple teams. You know, I love to see his assist and see how he handles just ball distribution. Look, we know he can take players off the dribble even at seven foot four. Yeah, as crazy as that sounds, yes, he can do that. But I definitely want to see can he maintain low turnovers? Can he find open guys? Because that's going to be key for your Sohans, for your Keldon, Devin. Who knows what happens with Trey Jones? He is a restrict. He is a uh, free, uh, free agent. We just gotta. We just gotta see. Zach, what what do you think about this? Do you think Spurs fans are expected him to be an All Star, or is that just too much too soon for him? I mean, that that's a good question. You know, the All Star, as you and I know, Jeff, it is a it's a popularity contest. I mean. Well, to be popular. Yep. Look, he's not even in the NBA yet, Zach. And the NBA announced they're having the first ever NBA con, you know, like Comic Con, but it's still called NBA Con in Las Vegas. He's not in the NBA yet, and he's a, he's going to be high, headlining the event. I, I think based on his popularity, like if he's just half as good as advertised, yeah, he's going to make it because fans are going to be buying his merch. I think he's going to make it on popularity alone. Not to say that he's not going to do anything on the court to deserve it, but I think didn't Yao Ming make it like his first yeah. six years in the league, and exactly. he had very you know his first year he had very pedestrian numbers. I mm -hmm. you know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he did have decent numbers, but if I'm just kind of going back through the archives of my mind, you know, watching Yao Ming his first year, I mean, he had some flashes, but I don't recall him being really dominant or you know, until maybe a few years later. Yeah. But um, again, well, I, I, I can see yeah. the entire country of France voting him in, though. I mean, Absolutely. That, that, yeah, that'll Absolutely. happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, no doubt. I think, you know, along with that, and then obviously the Spurs fan base, um, we'll see. I, I, I mean, I don't think it's beyond, um, I, I guess, let, let me, let me uh, rewind there. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that he could. Um, he could make the all-star team this season. I mean, if, is it an expectation? I don't know. I think rookie of the year is probably more of a reasonable expectation right. just because there's less competition amongst your fellow rookies. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, with the all-star game, you're going against, you know, the Nikola Jokic of the world and the Bam Adebayos and some of these big men that are already established, you know, Giannis, uh, so again, we just have to see what happens, but it's definitely possible. He is Zach Escamilla right here representing the Spurs fan base and their reaction to Victor Wimbayana, the Spurs winning the draft lottery. What are the expectations on and off the court and just the overall vibe? When we get back, we're going to talk to Zach about tanking. Was tanking the right thing to do for the Spurs? And is it a testament to, well, that, Simply all sports teams looking to rebuild should do. I asked that because there was a lot of debate between that among Spurs fans right here on Locked on Spurs, or should I say this fan episode of Locked on Spurs. Hey, look, San Antonio, are you still celebrating uh, the Spurs winning the draft lottery? I know I am. But if you're sitting up too late partying and you next day you want to just keep on going, well, if you need a pick-me-up, you want to go to Mudslingers drive through Coffee right here in San Antonio. Mud Slingers is locally owned and an independent coffee shop, and they're proud to make delicious coffee for our San Antonio community. They do it fast and friendly, so you get on with your day. So if you're in the mood for a latte, cold brew, the Red Bull-infused lightning bolt, yeah, that'll get you going. They have drinks for every taste. They have 300 five-star reviews that cannot be wrong. They also have a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low-calorie options, even caffeine-free drinks for you want to take it easy. They also have the O. G O J. Now you're like, what is that? Well, if you want to have that nostalgia vibes once again of carrying an orange Julius in your hand as you walk up and down Ingram Park Mall, going to Sam Goody Records, you remember that? Going to B Dalton Books at Ingram Park Mall that was right below the OJ as uh, Orange Julius. Well, they brought those vibes back. It's called the O G O J. I had the honor of naming it. So pick it up right now. It should be on the menu. If it's not on the menu, just ask for it. Just ask for the OGOJ. -O and guess what? You'll get yourself those Orange Julius vibes once again. Tastes just like that. I've been told that it's 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 a big hit. 
that all San Antonio there picked it up like it. And they'd say they did, it does pretty much match the old Orange Julius taste. Check it out. It's at Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee. It's a also a place for you to get your taste and convenient caffeine fix. Located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive near 21 to 1604. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You can find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at, at Mudslingers TX. That's M U D S L S L I N G E R S T X. Life is too short for bland coffee. We're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Zach Escamilla for a fan episode. And we're getting the fans' pulse. What are they thinking about Victor Wimbayana, the Spurs winning the NBA draft lottery? And finally, Zach, I'm going to wrap this up with you. Tanking, not tanking. This was a big debate among Spurs fans last season. I mean, it was almost daily. It got personal. It got crazy. And But eventually, I think when the, when the wins were not coming in as frequently, everybody kind of understood what was going on. Is tanking? Or should I say, should the Spurs fans that were pro-tank be vindicated for the results now with the Spurs winning the draft lottery? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely vindicated, Jeff. I mean, I wasn't even on Twitter, but, you know, you were sending me screenshots. I know, you know, some other folks were sending me screenshots that I, you know, chat with outside Twitter. And it was was pretty ugly. And I'm like, this is why I left Twitter, man. Um, But but let me tell you, um, being pro tank it it does feel good in a way to be like yeah i told you so you guys Mm -hmm. were wanting the play in and trying to win games when you had this potential big prize i mean listen even if the spurs didn't get number one they still would have received a pick within the top seven and that's Mm -hmm. still a higher pick than they've received in years you know so on being nine last year but the point is it was still an opportunity to get a really good player that they wouldn't have had had they tried winning more games. So um, yeah, again, it does feel good to be like, yeah, I told you so. Um, But again, what I mentioned a little earlier with me being back on Twitter recently, it seems like the team tank people have been really gracious and Mm -hmm. and welcoming to those that were very anti-tank because you know what? You can let everything be water under the bridge because now we have something to really cheer about again. We have mm-hmm. something to kind of get us back into the fold um, of the NBA. We're going to have consistent media coverage, which is hilarious because, as you know, national media really doesn't like us. But hey, yep. here we are. Yeah, <laughs> you got to. Yeah, yeah. Could have fooled me, Zach. You can't so, turn so, on the. T- you can't turn on the TV right now without the Spurs being mentioned. Now. Yeah. So, so for me, it's like we all win anti-tankers pro-tankers at the end of the day this is a win for all of us i mean for those of us that were you know had this in our vision like this was the goal um Mm -hmm. yeah it feels great but at the end of the day um and i think i even tweeted this i'm in too good of a mood to go out (laughs) and look for people that were anti-tank and say what now because what's that gonna do it's gonna create further division it's throwing gas on a fire um, and it's gas on a fire that frankly needs to be put out now. Mm-hmm. It's like we're here. And even though we all know they would have been insufferable and like, oh, this is why you don't tank only 40% chance, blah, 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 blah. Like it would have been nonstop. They would have been getting personal, calling out your mother, saying your your spouse looked ugly. Like I, I, I it, it's gross out there, dude. Some of the tweets mm-hmm. that people were showing me back then. So you know that would have been happening. But hey, here we are. It's a new day. Let's turn the page. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, you know, it worked for the Spurs. I mean, light, lightning struck three times now. Robinson, Duncan, now this guy. I mean, Wimpy, I mean, my goodness, you can't get more lucky than the Spurs. You know, heading into the draft, I felt they were, I, I didn't think they were going to get the number one. I thought it'd be that random team that makes the big leap. And we almost saw that with the Hornets. And I say, oh, here we go again. When it was down to the last four, and the Spurs were in it, I said, it's going to be Charlotte because they're that. It always happens that unexpected team wins it all. And, yeah, the Spurs were there, and the Hornets nearly got that. So, but as far as tanking is concerned, and, I mean, in this case, I think the Spurs had no choice because for several years now, they've just been stuck in the mud and stuck in the mud. 
DeMar didn't do it. You know, DeJounte, you know, you know, they saw him more as an asset. Derek, just more of an asset. Jakob, an asset. So, and now it's paying off. So, good things are ahead for the Spurs next season, or starting now. Starting now. As mentioned earlier, Zach, he's not even in the NBA yet, and Victor Wimbayana is going to be a part of the headlining team of, M- of players, I should say, because he's not in the NBA yet, for NBA Con. So the Spurs are going to be on the map. Have you, have you even noticed, too, the national media is already putting it out there, Zach, that they're warning the Spurs that they're moving to San Antonio now? <laughs> they're saying, <laughs> we're going to be in San Antonio now. Uh, you know, hotels, short-term apartments, all this stuff uh, because of just him. And that's the impact that he's bringing. So fun times and good times are ahead for your silver and black. Zach, we want to thank you for repping the fan base, giving us the pulse of the fan base when it comes to the Spurs winning the draft lottery, Victor on his way, everything. I bet you're excited. Did you get a season tickets? Not yet. Um, I'm definitely going to look into it, though. I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just, you know, see if there's a you know a Friday night or a Saturday night game. You know, yeah. sometimes it's, it, it's tough to get out with the little ones. But other than that, I'm definitely going to make sure to attend some games this season. Uh, no doubt whether whether it's season tickets or whether it's you know like i said those um handful of games when the Mm -hmm. wifey and i can get out um it's definitely going to be a priority list but one quick thing i do want to add jeff you know with all the media coming to town to san antonio i think if not spurs twitter but somebody maybe this is you put together a list of things to do outside of the river walk because so many people are always bad mouthing oh the river walk sucks i don't like it blah 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 and it's like well listen locals we don't go to the river walk at least yeah. i don't and people yeah. that i know personally that live here we don't go to the river walk you know we'll go and you know maybe we'll go to south town you know and do some things that are away from the river walk but mm-hmm. uh you know there are so many things to do in and around san antonio that don't necessarily involve the river walk. So I think it would be cool if we could start compiling a list of, hey, you're coming in town to see Wemby. Here are some outside the box things due to in San Antonio that are actually fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be weird because it's been a while since the Spurs have had embedded reporters with the team since I I mean the, the big three era. There was those embedded reporters for Tony Parker from France that's lived in San Antonio. They would just literally commute from France to San Antonio uh, throughout the season just to cover him. Same thing with Manu, Argentinian press. Uh, I don't think you had too much with Timmy because Timmy was just different. He didn't want all the attention, so there wasn't that much. But, I mean, you, you see it. Uh, Luka Doncic with the Mavericks. They He has Slovenian uh, media that are, are with them attached to the hip. So you're going to have French media. You're definitely going to have your, your ESPN familiar faces embedded in San Antonio just because of this kid. I mean, the NBA is hyping him already. They were playing his Metropolitan's games free all season long just for him. So it's definitely the AT&T Center is going to feel a lot different when the new season begins. Once again, thank you, though, Zach Escamilla, for repping the fan base right here on Lockdown Spurs. And thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen. You guys are the everydayers. Next week's show, we're going to continue all things win by Yana. So for Zach Escamilla, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs.